Thanks so much for having me today. Um, I'm going to just begin by talking a little bit about the definition of music therapy. Not everyone has encountered this, um, so I'll just begin this way. This is one of the definitions I like to use. It's an interpersonal process in which the therapist uses music in all of its facets. So um, when I go in and I meet someone, um, we form a relationship through using music together. And also discussion is also um, very often a part of it. Music therapy is defined as a mind-body therapy by the uh, National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. That's a branch of the National Institute of Health. I like to add that it is a unique experience for each person who participates. Um, in music therapy, we really tailor the session according to what a person's interests are, as well as their mood their, and their energy level. And music therapy is um, conducted or provided by credentialed professionals who've had training. At Sloan Kettering, if a person wants to receive music therapy, it's an inpatient service through integrative medicine. Anyone can call and request it. The sessions are held at bedside, and it's missing from the slide, but it's free. There's no charge. Um, when um, someone calls, uh, the in intake coordinator will ask them uh, what, which integrative medicine service they are, they're interested in. Uh, music therapy is just one of the things that are offered. And um, also they will ask the reason for the referral. So uh, typically, I might learn that somebody has anxiety, uh, perhaps a depressed mood, perhaps they've been in some pain, or um, they're not getting very many visitors. Um, maybe, you know, their family is far away and um, they, you know, are interested in using music and getting to meet someone. When it comes to defining the goals, um, we first begin by finding out what a person needs, how they're feeling, what they're interested in. And um, these are some of the most typical goals. What happens in a music therapy session? People ask me this all the time. What do you do? I come in and I always have the guitar with me and some small percussion instruments. Um, most often, um, if we are doing a receptive technique, uh, it means that the person I've come to visit prefers to be able to sit or lie down and receive some music. Um, then typically, um, I'll play something for them. They may tell me a little bit about what they're interested in, but sometimes people just don't even have the energy to do that. And I need to sort of look around the room or talk to a family member and get a sense of what might be appropriate for that person. Um, I also do something called music-assisted relaxation, where um, I begin to play a little bit and uh, over my own playing, I'll begin to give some verbal cues, some suggestions for relaxation, for following one's breath, for example, or, or maybe some imagery. Under active techniques, <clears throat> um, I am there to help facilitate making sure that anyone who wants to has the opportunity to sing, to play some instruments. Um, I bring like a, uh, drums or other types of percussion instruments with me. In some cases, I've uh, met individuals who are themselves musicians, and um, I can bring an extra guitar for them if that's their instrument. I could bring a keyboard to the room. Um, sometimes people want to learn a little bit, and that becomes part of what we do. I always have my music book with me as well, and um, people will often select songs. Um, sometimes we discuss the meaning of the lyrics, and uh, writing songs is another opportunity for a person to be able to express themselves and use music in a meaningful way. Now that we've been talking about what happens, I thought I'd give you a quick sample. 
ask everyone to try to be comfortable in their seat and just take a moment for yourself. <laughs> You can close your eyes if you'd like, or maybe just find a distant focal point for a moment. And begin to allow yourself to follow your breath. Just taking a moment to notice. Keeping it very brief, <laughs> so we'll we'll end that part for right there for now. And I thought I'd just take a moment to um, to let you know that music therapy is something um, which has received a lot of uh, research attention, and um, this is just one study I wanted to point out because it was done here at Memorial back in 2003, and then published in the journal Cancer. Um, a group of 62 people were randomized, which means some, some got music therapy, some did not, about half and half, actually. Um, and uh, these were patients who had a lengthy hospitalization. They were in hospital for at least four weeks. And um, if anyone who's had a lengthy hospitalization, I'm sure, must know that the tendency to, um, to have some mood disturbance is uh, typical. Um, so the people who received music therapy at least twice a week, um, compared to those who did not, scored 37% lower for mood disturbance on the profile of mood states. And we like those odds. And um, also, I just would mention, um, there are a lot of neuroscientists throughout the country, um, some who are very interested in understanding how music is processed in the brain. And some of this research is really interesting for us as we try to uh, understand better ourselves what we're doing in music therapy. Um, what we've learned from neuroscientists who've done functional MRIs of musicians is that musical activities are widely distributed in the brain, not held in one region, as may have been previously thought. People who play instruments a lot or sing a lot have an increased brain volume. And that listening engages many of the same areas as language, food, and sex, but it also uses partly unique neural circuits. And uh, these are some pieces of information I learned from Daniel Levitin, whose book, um, This Is Your Brain on Music, was published in 2006. And Oliver Sacks is a neurologist in New York. Um, he's written a, a quite a lot. I think Musicophilia is his most recent book. This is a, a quote of his that I wanted to share. I regard music therapy as a tool of great power in many neurological disorders. And in ending today, I wanted to just um, echo one of our panelists who enjoys singing in a choir. I think that's terrific. I think um, music can be a part of everyone's daily life. I hope that it can be a meaningful part of many people's lives. If you like to sing, it doesn't matter if it's in the shower or, um, or at a ballpark, um, it doesn't, you know, doesn't matter where it happens, but if you like, enjoy doing it, I encourage anyone who likes to play or sing to do just that. Of course, um, we all, I think, have access to a lot of recordings, to radio, and um, it's a matter of making a choice for ourselves. So um, if you like to load up your MP3 player um, and, and find a lot of relaxing 
recordings for yourself. You may want to bring them with you when you have medical appointments uh, to help pass the time or to help fall asleep at night. And also with the summer coming up, many times there are free concerts um, in parks. Um, I encourage people to um, get out and enjoy as much as they can. And I, my time is up, so I thank you all very much.